Hey everyone, it's Kristen here from Magoosh, and today on Tuesday CT, we are going to talk about trig basics. Now, a lot of the students that I've tutored for the ACT are really intimidated by the trig on the test, either because they haven't studied it yet in school, they're just barely starting to study it, or they're in trig and they have no idea what's going on. So, a lot of the times, I just end up teaching it to them in just less than an hour because there's only a few basic concepts that are tested on the ACT and so if you just learn those few things you can definitely pick up the points on the trig questions even if it's not a math topic that you're completely comfortable with. So that is what I'm going to share with you in this video. This is the first video. We're going to do a few videos on trig topics. So this is the very first one. We're going to talk about the absolute basics that you need to know and what we talk about in this video is definitely going to help you get at least one maybe two, maybe even three trig questions, depending on what they're about. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first of all, what is trigonometry? Well, trigonometry is the field of math that deals with triangles, particularly the relationship between the sides and the angles of triangles. And in a trig class, typically the first thing you learn about are right triangles. So here is a happy little three, four, five right triangle. And I've labeled my sides here hypotenuse, adjacent and opposite. Now, adjacent and opposite refers to this angle right here. So if we're looking at this angle, this is the side that's adjacent, this is the side that's opposite. Now, it's really important that you learn to think of the sides this way and to label them this way because the next thing you tend to learn in trig class is a mnemonic called SOKOTOA. And I will spell that out for you here in just a minute, but the O's and the H's and the A's in SOKOTOA stand for opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. But what do the S and the C and the T in SOKOTOA stand for? Well, they stand for these three things. And if you're new to trig, you just want to memorize these three things, okay? So you can do that. Three things, sine, cosine, and tangent, and they're typically abbreviated this way with three letters for each one, the first three letters for each of these terms. These just have to do with the different ratios of the sides in the triangle. So sine is, here's SOKOTOA spelled out for you, Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it comes in that order. And then the ka part it means that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent means opposite over adjacent. So those are the ratios that these particular trig terms refer to, and you can remember which one is which by remembering SOKOTOA. So if you're dealing with a right triangle on the test and you see some trig terms, the first thing I suggest that you do is write down SOKOTOA because I cannot tell you the number of times where I've made a mistake or one of my students has made a mistake because they accidentally did adjacent over hypotenuse when they were looking for sign because they just got it mixed up in their head. So make sure you always write it down and make sure you're careful that you choose the right term. All right, so here are a few things you can do now that you know SOKOTOA. If we are given a triangle, actually let me go back to the triangle that I already showed you at the beginning. If you are given a triangle and you are asked what is the sine of x, well, you know now that you know SOKOTOA that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and so the sine of this angle right here, sine of x, would be 3 over 5. It's as simple as that. If it asks you for the tangent of x, well, if you know SOKOTOA, it's opposite over adjacent, so that would be 3 over 4. And yes, there are questions on the ACT that are that simple. So, you got that one. Let's do something a little bit harder. Here is another triangle. Now, let's say that we have a triangle and we're given an angle of 10 here, and we have the opposite side here. We could have the adjacent side. Basically, once you know these trig terms, if you know at least one angle, and that is other than the right angle in a right triangle, and you know at least one of the sides, you can find the other two sides, usually using your calculator because there's sine and cosine and tangent buttons on graphing or scientific calculators. But if the test asked you about this, they would actually give you a table of values because they don't expect you to have to have a calculator. But if you wanted to find for example, let's say we want to find the hypotenuse of this, we would just do sine of 10, set this up, equals opposite over hypotenuse. And then you can move this around, so you would have x equals 3 divided by sine of 10, plug it in your calculator, it'll give you the value. If we wanted to find the adjacent side, we would do the same thing with tangent, because we have that opposite side, but we want to find the adjacent and set up that ratio. Pretty cool. All right, here is a very ACT-like scenario. I drew you a pretty tree. You'll often see pictures like this on word problems on the ACT. 
So let's say that the question tells you that we know that the shadow of this tree is 24 feet long and that the cosine of this angle of altitude here, we'll call it theta, that's usually what angles are often referred to in trigonometry, theta, that the cosine of theta is 4 over 5 and it asks you to find the height of the tree. Now, that may sound a little intimidating at first, how do you find that? But we know that what the ratios are and we, so we can do, make some, we can do some calculations here, set up an equation to figure out some of the other sides. So here's how you would do it. Now, we have the cosine here, we know that's 4 over 5 and we know that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So, because it's 4 over 5 and we know the actual height of the tree, actually sorry, the actual length of adjacent over hypotenuse, the actual length of the shadow, not the height of the tree because that would be opposite, is 24, we can set up a proportion to calculate this. So remember that sines and cosines and tangents are always giving you relationships between them. So it may not be the exact length of the side, it's giving you the proportion. So we know that the proportion, the sides are proportionally related 4 over 5, but we need to find the actual, the actual length. So if we solve that proportion, we get 30 equals x. But that's the hypotenuse, remember? And we're looking for the height of the tree, but that's okay because now that we know the hypotenuse, we can do the Pythagorean theorem and plug that in. The length of the shadow, 24 squared, plus the height of the tree squared equals 30 squared, which we found here for the hypotenuse, and get that the height of the tree is 30. Now, if you are super bright, you probably realize that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle because the side is a 4, or it's a ratio of 4, and the hypotenuse here is a 5, so that would have to be 3. If you were super smart and figured that out, then you could just do a proportion using that 3 over there. And you'll find 3, 4, 5 triangles or other Pythagorean triples on the test a lot. So you want to be watching out for that in your trig ratios as well, too. Okay, so those are the basic uh, trig. Remember, Sokotoa, you want to have that pounded into your brain and write it down anytime you see a right triangle with some trig functions, and you'll hopefully be able to pick up those points even if trig is not really your thing. But if trig is your thing or you want to learn more, then you can go to act.magush.com because we have lessons on all the trig stuff and everything else on the test. But I will see you here next Tuesday, ACT, with some more tips for the test as well.